Luke's Episcopal Church in Long Beach, California. Whether you're joining us on Zoom or with Facebook Live, we are glad to have you here with us today as we continue our season of deconstructing racism. Our guest preacher this morning is Reverend Dr. Andre Bennett, and you surely have a treat in store for you. We will raise up our prayers and praises to God. We will gather in community. We will be nourished spiritually by God's holy communion. And I hope and pray that this worship will raise you up so that you can indeed be God's faithful people, deconstructing racism and making God's realm a reality. We'll begin worship shortly.
Blessed be the one holy and living God. God for Glory to God, God forever. forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Of the Lord, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall always be on my lips. My soul shall glory in the Lord for he. He has been so good to me. Oh, taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, taste and see, taste and see. The goodness of the Lord, of the Lord. Glorify the Lord with me. Together let us all praise his name. And I called the Lord and he answered me from all my troubles he set me free oh taste and see taste and see the goodness of the Lord and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord, of the Lord. Worship the Lord, all you people, and you, you want nothing if you and see that God is good. In Him, Him we need to put all our trust. Taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. And see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord, of the Lord. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant 
O merciful God, that your church being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 A reading from Leviticus. When an alien resides with you in your land, you shall not oppress the alien. The alien who resides with you shall be to you as a citizen among you. You shall love the alien as yourself, for you were aliens in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. You shall not cheat in measuring length, weight, or quantity. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. 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 <laughs>
A reading from the book of Isaiah. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion, he will comfort all her waste places, and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving in the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation, for a teaching will go out from me and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me and for my arm like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment and those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever and my deliverance will never be ended. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. books got it all wrong, so I come to you with a song. In 1810, con el gran grito de pasión, se levantaron con razón. Black and brown fighting together on the day I'll always remember. In el 5 de mayo, con el grito de gallo, black, white, and brown bleeding together on the day I'll always remember. Really, it hasn't been that long, so just in case Cat Williams had you guessing, let me kick y'all down with a little history lesson. In the 19th century, while the U.S. promoted degradation, annihilation with its military and U.S. Navy, Mexico got rid of the caste system, voted for its first indigenous president, even getting rid of legalized slavery. Ground Railroad also ran south, which led black folks to freedom with Mexico right there to receive them. In 1910, it was Mexican men with Pancho Villa and Zapata fighting for tierra, libertad, y techo, with Adelitas on the front line with bullets across their pecho. In the year 1946, it was the Mendez family that fought against segregation in schools. Because before that, they treated us like fools, pushing us out into gangs, wars, and drugs. And then they get pissed off at us when we become crips and bloods, traviesos, zutsuras, bachucos, folkloristas, punks, bomberas, haraneras in the heat, haraneras with the bomb as beats. Talking about what's really going on in the streets. In the 60s, in the streets of Oakland, California, Black Panthers organized for answers. Young lords in New York fought against wars. The Stonewall Rebellion remained true for the rights of the LGBTQ. AIM, who was down for native rights with no shame in their game. Brown raised in LA learning how to fight and doing what's right. In the campus of California, Filipinos were the first ones to lay down the boycott, screaming in solidarity, Isang Baksak, one rise, one fall, you come for one, you come for all. And today, Arizona and Alabama, they don't play, carving out racist laws like it's made out of clay. I stand with Emmett, Trayvon, Oscar, and Bell, with my mentor, Mumia, up in the cell, telling you I'd rather be blind than to stay quiet on a day where my people are hunt down like prey. My ability to breathe is directly connected to my ability to see. It's not about me, never was, never will be. It's about we. It's time to move, y'all. It's movement time. This letter is entitled, Is This Not Christ? 
is this not Christ? I asked myself as the face of Michael Brown appears on Twitter. A young black man crucified by the American empire. My father says we're not of this world. We should not concern ourselves with unholy acts of protest. I don't question him. I'm not sure what to think. But is this not Christ? I ask myself as Black Lives Matter begins to trend on my phone. Is this not mass? I ask myself. As thousands of people gather in front of LAPD headquarters, the liturgy is spontaneous. A young black woman speaks on the megaphone, preaching to the huddled masses. A hymn is sung, defund the police, we sang union. Is this not communion? I ask myself. My friends and I stand in downtown Los Angeles on a hot May evening, chanting, say her name. A young white woman gives me crackers and offers me water. The body of Christ in the midst of protest. I eat this in remembrance of him. I tell myself as I think of George Floyd and chewing dry crackers. Is this not a miracle? I ask myself as my friend begins to heal the sick. A young man was hit in the head by a police baton. My friend's hands work delicately as she puts a bandage on his bleeding forehead. We keep walking as we hear police sirens cut off the front of the march. Is this not the kingdom of God? I ask myself. Christ is fully present throughout the nation, his feet seen in daily marches, his hands seen in acts of first aid, his voice heard in chants. For if I'm a humble servant to God, then how do I build his kingdom? I ask myself. As a young, queer, Latinx person, the church is complicated. I left my previous church for various reasons and did not sit in the pews for two years. In large part, I left my previous church because it was unwilling to recognize the issues I brought up. Within those two years when I did not go to church, I started to organize on campus and within the union. As I was called back to go to church earlier this year, I saw St. Luke's as a space that listened to all of me, a young, queer, Latinx organizer. I view the church as both accompanying those who are walking in the wilderness by providing food, showers, and pastoral care. But at the same time, I see the church building the kingdom of God by challenging Pharaoh and the systems erected by Pharaoh. I believe that St. Luke's can be a church that stands with black tenants who get evicted by greedy landlords, a church that stands with immigrants when ice raids occur, and a church that shows up for black people when police murder community members. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Lord. Praise to you, Lord. So we have a treat in store for us today, and it is one of the blessings that comes with Zoom worship. Because in the midst of Zoom worship, you don't have to have your preachers or participants be physically present. And so um, Reverend Nancy and I are uh, calling on our relational networks and asking our friends to do us a favor, to preach God's word in this moment to our community of St. Luke's. And so we're sharing with you folks we love because we know them, we trust them, and we have every confidence they will disrupt your spirits in that good God kind of a way. So Andre, welcome to St. Luke's. Thank you for being here with us today. Thank you, Jane. Thank you so much. I have to first, and I promised Jane when we were talking that I wouldn't do that, but I'm sure Jane knew that I was lying. Um, you know, I have to say it is first and foremost an absolute blessing, a privilege, and an honor to virtually share your pulpit um, and to see my friend, my dear sister, whom I have absolutely no shame or reservation in saying I love deeply. It is great to see your face, Jane. You know, St. Luke, I do have to say for a little while there, I, 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 I had ill feeling towards you when, jo when, when Jane told us that she was leaving and she was going to California and, and she told us that she, she was going to St. Luke, we, I, I had a bit of ill feeling towards you because you took from us, or we loan you, one of God's great gifts to this age and this time. When I came to America and to Massachusetts in particular 12 years ago, I was invited maybe three months into my settled ministry at the, the, the con a different congregation in Lynn. I was invited to an ecumenical service. And the first speaker of that service was the Reverend Jane Gould. And I remember sitting in the back of the, um, the, the, the sanctuary and I listened to, to this woman speak with such passion and such eloquence and such conviction and clarity. And I'm gonna be honest, and I'm sure this is not the first time Jane will hear me say this. My first reaction is, I want to be friends with her. And I was gonna be friends with Jane one way or the other. I was gonna forge a friendship with Jane. A year and a half would go by before our paths would cross again through the work that we both do with ECHO, the Essex County Community Organization and MCAN, Massachusetts Communities Action Network. And from that work, a budding friendship developed. And from that budding friendship, a lifelong bond has been formed. And so I'm eternally grateful. I'm, I'm humbled for the invitation and it's always always a pleasure and a privilege to see your face. We, 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 we were together, I think in February in Las Vegas and just seeing and hugging Jane brought me to tears um, because I hadn't seen Jane in such a while. So thank you, Jane. And thank you, St. Luke's for, for giving me this, this opportunity to, to address you. Now, I will apologize for a couple of things firstly. The first one being I'm a Baptist preacher. I will apologize for that. It's not your fault. Um, but, you know, Baptist preachers are a little, you know, unruly from time to time. And so I, I will apologize for that. And the second one is there's some Pentecostal uh, blood flowing in my veins. I will also apologize for that. You're about to get, you're about to get what I deem the Bapticostal version of me. Uh, 
Um, and so I, I did send the scripture Leviticus 19 to be added to the readings, but my sermon is actually taken from another scripture, and that is a part of the Baptist just unruly behavior of, of the of Baptist preachers. <laughs> so if you will permit me to read Second Chronicles 12. If you will permit me to read Second Chronicles 12. Uh, 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 verse, I'm sorry, Second Chronicles 7, verse 12, and I'm going to just read three, three verses just to contain myself. I haven't seen Joan in a long time, Jane, I'm sorry, in a long time, and so I'm going to try and spend as much time as I possibly can with her and with you this morning. Um, so feel, you know, feel free to send me a personal message to say shut up now, okay? Second <laughs> uh, Chronicles 7, verse 12, and the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. If I shut up, and this is the Lord speaking to Solomon, if I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, the Lord continued, he said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. Some time ago, I was invited to a retreat in Washington, D.C. And at this retreat, there was a bunch of faith and religious leaders and elders from a wide cross-section of religious and tribal practices. At the end of the first day, I was approached and asked by one of the organizers if I would be willing to provide the faith reflection for the following morning. And of course, the introvert, if you can believe that there's an introvert there, <laughs> the introvert that is there first believes, you know, thought, no, you shouldn't do this. There's like over 300 learned men and women studied individual. You shouldn't do this. But the Christ that is in me, the Christ that said, I did not give you a spirit of fear, but of love and of a sound mind. That Christ caused me to nervously smile and gracefully accept the task. You see, I was at this national gathering and I was tasked with giving a faith reflection to a room full of Jews and Gentiles, Catholics and Protestants, uh, Christians and Universalists, Buddhists and Muslims, a room full of bishops and sheikhs, rabbis and reverends, preachers and teachers, faith elders and pastors, rectors and priests. I was tasked with giving a faith reflection. I opened the next morning as I didn't sleep well the night before because I'm thinking of what in the devil's hell that I agree to. <laughs> and, and before I go further, I just want to say, like, I was listening to, to, um, to that wonderful number that was, um, that was played earlier. And any church that allows the term pissed off in service to be said in service is a church that I want to be at. So I'm just letting you know, St. Lou, you'll see me more often. I'm just letting you know that because I, li I like what I hear so far. But as I sat up that night and I thought about what my faith reflection was going to be, I prayed and the following morning I opened the faith reflection with something like this. I said, each of our faith traditions and worship practices calls for us to do something differently, or maybe not. Some of us would probably do some kind of meditation, others a prayer of some sort, and some the naming and the lifting up of someone or some place that is sacred, and some may require something as simple yet incredibly powerful as just recentering to oneself. 
As I spoke, I realized that I had captured the attention of a room full of interfaith leaders. So I continued. I said, my Christian tradition not only call for 15 minutes of solitude and prayer, but specifically my Baptist faith, my Baptist practice tells me that this moment, and it is telling me right now that this moment is is a golden opportunity for me to tell of the good news of Jesus. You see, my Baptist and the Pentecostal practices and, 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 and roots that I have tells me that any time I get the opportunity to address people, it is a perfect and, and a unique opportunity to share how great God has been, to share of the good news of Christ. It requires me as a Baptist preacher to use the moment to preach and to teach, to remind us of how ungrateful we have been to the Lord for not seeing how blessed we are as a people, as a nation uh, of privilege, wealth, and power. My tradition requires me to remind us how good and how great God has been to us, how he woke us up this morning and clothed us in our right minds, and that we are blessed because we are standing on top of our graves. That's what my Baptist and my Pentecostal practice calls for me to do. We are blessed uh, to be seen and not to be viewed. You see, I grew up with my grandmother in the old country in Jamaica. And, you know, when my grandmother is going grocery or going whatever she would be doing, and I had to be with her because I was a grandmama's boy. And my grandmother knew everybody much like my dear friend and assistant who is here with me, Sister Barbara, but my grandmother knew everybody in the community and she had to stop and talk to every person that she passed for at least two minutes. And it was a densely populated area. So we would, we would be passing a bunch of people and, and she would always say something, you know, they would say, Miss Green, how are you? You know, that sing tune kind of a, a greeting. And my grandmother would say something like, it is good to be seen and not viewed. And so my Baptist faith, my Baptist tradition tells me that every opportunity I get, I should remind people that it is good to be seen and not viewed. Going back to that uh, th that faith reflection in that room in DC, as I, as I spoke, I looked up uh, from my prepared presentation and I saw that the room, there was about 80% of the room standing on its feet and, and, and clapping its hands. And that's the last thing you want to do to a Baptist preacher when he has a mic is they stand up and cheer because then he's going to talk even, even more. And so I got comfortable the moment I saw that. You see, I was no longer shaky. I was no longer nervous. The Baptist preacher in me got excited. And suddenly my feet stopped shaking and they were planted firm and the Bapticostal preacher showed up. And yes, let me tell you, I started preaching. I started getting into, into a sermon. I formed the, the, the audience that I wish I could tell them that I was breaking my Baptist tradition. And I wish I could tell you, St. Luke, that I'm breaking my Baptist tradition this morning, but I'm not. I come by to tell us of the good news of Jesus Christ. It is in keeping with my faith that I sit here, that I stand here virtually this morning to remind us that we are in fact standing on top of our graves figuratively and literally. Oh, yes, you see, I dare remind us that this morning, we are, this morning, August 23rd, I believe it is, we are, in fact, standing on top of our graves. You see, the world five months ago came to a global halt because of this COVID pandemic, and many people, as a matter of a fact, here in the United States of America, 172 people less, 172,000 people less are with us today that started into this pandemic with us. They came in with us, but they didn't make it out. So we are, in fact, blessed to be standing on top of our graves. I dare remind us that God has been good to us. And you see, I want to get rid of the figurative piece of it. It's good to be alive. That's, that's really what that means to say we're standing on top of our graves. But let me get to the literal aspect of it. We are walking on graves in this country. This country has become a mass 
cemetery. We're walking on the graves of our black and our brown brothers, our siblings, our, our gay and our trans siblings who have been murdered at the hands of law enforcement and bigotry and racism and, 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 and discrimination. We are walking on top of graves in this land. You see, it is, it, 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 it is okay for those of us who feel a sense of safety and ease to, to sit and wonder what is this little dreadlock man from Massachusetts telling us this morning. I wanna tell us, like I said, even as we speak right now, one of my black sibling, male or female, is somewhere being harassed by police officers, by, 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 by citizens who do not feel as though he or she belongs. You see, there was a young man who got up and decided he was going to go visit a friend of his back in 2012. And uh, he decided to stop at a store and get some Skittles before he went to see his friend. This young man was 15 years old, and because he wore a hooded shirt, somebody saw him and thought that his life needed to come to an end in that moment. But more so than the murder, the killing of my brother uh, 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 Trevon Martin in that moment is the message that the system sent his family and, and parents all across this country, black and brown indigenous parents all across this country. And I know something about being a black parent. You see, I have had the privilege, I've had the honor of parenting four amazingly beautiful children, two of whom are currently serving in the United States Navy. And uh, one who is currently home with me that has been my world, has been my shadow since the day he was born. He is 17 years and 11 months old. In about a month's time, he will be 18 years old. And not a day goes by when that kid leaves my sight or my presence that I don't worry that he may not return. So I know something about being a black parent in a country that after a young black man was murdered senselessly in cold blood, the justice system told his murderer that you did the right thing. You got rid of one more. I speak of brother Trayvon Martin and, and that gave way to three young women who decided that they were sick and tired of being sick and tired, our sister Alicia Garza and our sister Patrice Colors and our sister Opal Tamodi. And they said, we have got to organize. We have got to start a movement that will send a message, not just here in the United States of America, but across this globe that black lives do matter. And from there being sick and tired, the Black Lives Matter movement started. And here we are seven years later after Many, many countless numbers of our black and our brown siblings have either died at the hands of law enforcement or have been wrongfully imprisoned and continue to be wrongfully imprisoned. Uh, many of our trans and our LGBTQ uh, siblings continue to face oppression. Here we are seven years later still saying black lives matter. I come by with a simple message. St. Luke, our land is in need of healing. Our land is in need of healing. And you may ask, how then can we heal our land? Well, I'm happy you asked. Thank you for asking, because the scripture that I read before Second Chronicles 7, it gave us a remedy in, in verse 14. It said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. I come by to tell you that in order for a land to be healed, you might think that you're humble enough, but if you aren't doing something 
something to stand up to white supremacy in this country, to bigotry in this country, then you're not humble enough. You might think that you are praying enough, but if you're not standing, locking arms and standing with our black or brown or indigenous communities or LGBT communities, then you're not praying hard enough. You see, someone read a poem just recently, just in the, uh, before I preach, my brother Nathan, is this not Christ? Mm, and when I went, when, when, when Jane sent me that poem uh, this past week, and I hope it is okay with you, my dear brother, I had to share that poem with people because I thought it was just the most powerful thing I have read in a long time. Our land is in need of healing. We continue to fight you. They say to us all the time, well, why can't you march? And why can't you demonstrate and protest peacefully? Why can't you do like what Martin Luther uh, King Jr. did? Well, let me tell you why we can't do what MLK Jr. did. Because when MLK Jr. did what he did, they took him out a few years afterwards. And so he didn't get to continue the work. He said, I had a dream and we are living in a night mere some 50 plus years after he was taken out. We're still living in a nightmare. We're still living in a time where people who look different, who look like I do black and dreadlocks and have an accent are told that they're not needed and that they're not wanted and that there's no place here for them. But I come by to destroy that lie. This land is our land. This land is our land. This land is our land. And I say to us, in order for us to recognize that healing that we need, all of us, you that are watching and listening right now and those on Facebook and the World Wide Web, we all have to take a stance. Let me tell you something. If my grandmother always said, my grandmother is my shiro. I am one of those people who learned after the fact that I had one of the greatest treasures and didn't know that. You see, I didn't quite know how to appreciate the lessons that my grandmother would try to teach me. And what do I know? I was a dumb kid who thought I knew everything. Because you know how it is. If you're, if you're a parent, you have a child, and when they get to two years old, they think they're grown. The moment they start walking, they think they are grown. And then, and, and, and then they get to 10 years old, and you can't tell them anything. And then they get to 16 years old and they can save the world. They know everything. I was that child. I was, I was that kid. And so some of the lessons that my grandmother would impart unto me, I couldn't. I wasn't at a place to receive it. I was too puffed up and thought too much about myself. I thought I was all that and three bags of chips uh, with some sauce on the side. That's what I thought when my grandmother tried to impart some lessons unto me, but my grandmother would always say, and this stays with me, she said, if any person stand before you and declare, I alone can fix it. I alone have the answer. I alone know how to do it. My grandmother said, run and don't stop running because that is a liar and a deceiver. And we saw in 2015, somebody descended an elevator. And the first thing that he did was declare war on our Latinx siblings. That was the first thing that he did. The second thing he did, he tricked over 60, two million people in thinking that he had the answer to fix things. But let me tell you what he had and what he continues to have and peddle in. It is hatred and it is bigotry. It is racism and it is white supremacy. And we, the people of God, he said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, let me tell you what humility look like in this time, understanding that we have privilege, recognizing our privilege and our power and using that harness and that and using that for the greater good. That is what humility looks like in this time. He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, seek my face. Let me tell you what seeking the face of God looks like in this moment. It is finding Christ in our situations that are, we face. It is finding the opportunity. You see, Christ, if, if the word of God is to be believed, if the holy text is to be believed, 
believe Christ didn't dwell among the rich and the famous, the wealthy and the powerful. He found himself, he was a disruptor firstly of the peace. Uh, and then he found himself among those that would be considered the dregs of society, the bottom of the barrel. And those were the people that he made his, his friends. This is what seeking the face of Christ looks like. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, recognize your power, recognize your privilege, and get off of your high horses, understand that, yes, you're going to lose some of that privilege. Your cities are going to look a little bit different. Your towns are going to look, God, I wish I could preach in this place right now. Your towns are going to look a little bit different. Your church house is going to look a little bit different. Your worship service is going to sound a little bit different. They're not going to be too many white faces. They're going to be some black and some brown faces. They're going to be some English and some Spanish speakers. And some, in, and some 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 different languages in your space humble myself seek his face get down into the trenches you have what i believe and it's not because she's looking her face is a face that i'm seeing on my screen i'm saying this because i genuinely believe it you have one of the greatest human rights activists of this era, this woman that I met uh, some, some 11 and a half years ago, and I've watched for about seven or eight years, work assiduously and selflessly to ensure that all people understood and understand that they are equal and that they are loved and that they are welcome. She sits in your midst. I'm letting you know something. As much as I have ill feelings against you, I'm very happy for you because you have someone that you can learn from. You have someone that can lead you and who knows how to lead in the trenches. Seek my face. And then what else he said? Turn from your wicked ways. Turn. You see, there, 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 there are some conditions. There are some conditions. Turn from their wicked ways. Understand. You see, when I was growing up in Jamaica, every summer around July and August, a group of white people would come to our community and they looked like they came from America and they smelled good and they had beautiful accents and long flowing hair. And they would host what is called vacation Bible school every summer. And they would bring beautiful stuff and American stuff, mac and cheese, my all time favorite. And they would bring candies and they would bring nice smelling clothes and shoes and an iris spring soap that's where my love for iris spring came from iris spring soap they would bring it and they would distribute it to the community and they would spend two weeks with us and my grandmother like i said you know my grandmother is my shiro she worked very hard she had but a third grade education but she worked very hard and built herself a big old house on a ranch uh we had about 12 to 14 bedrooms and just a huge house and so when all these white people come to our church of course they would have to stay at our house for the two weeks because we had enough space to put them on. The problem with that is that there were so many of them that I had to give up my bedroom. My grandmother had to give up her bedroom. My siblings had to give up their bedroom. And now we all had to like cram in the living room for two weeks, sleeping on top of each other. And I was sick and tired of it after about three days. <laughs> I'm, just being, I'm just being honest. I, I was tired of it. Not only were we packed on top of each other, but my grandmother was the head cook and bottle washer for the for the for, for the community so for vacation bible school she would cook three meals per day she would clean up she would do this and let me tell you something if you ever grow up with your grandparent when she volunteers to do something she really isn't doing it you're doing it she's directing you how to do it whatever she volunteered for and so i would have to get up me and my siblings we would have to get up five o'clock in the morning and start meal prep and we would bring lug all the food down to the church house where the vbs is going on and we would wait until vbs is done by two o'clock in the day and we would be spending hours and hours cleaning up and after we're done cleaning up we go back home and we start the food prep all over for tomorrow. And I was sick and tired of it. Especially after I've had about three straight days of mac and cheese, I get tired of it after three straight days of mac and cheese and beautiful candies and all that stuff. And I remember, I remember 
one particular Wednesday, my grandmother woke me up, it had to be about 5.30 in the morning, and I threw a tantrum. And let me tell you something, if you've never seen a tantrum before, I will show you one when I see you. I threw a tantrum. And my grandmother got so angry, and I've never seen, my grandmother hardly get outside of character. I don't know how she maintained herself, but she hardly got out of character. But she got so mad and she grabbed me by the collar. She grabbed, she grabbed me by the collar and she hauled me <laughs> uh, into the farmhouse. And our farmhouse was like another house. Um, but she, she hauled me into the farmhouse and I'm, I'm barely, my feet are barely touching the ground. That's how fast she's moving. My feet are barely touching the ground. And we got to the farmhouse. I, was, I probably was about eight or nine years old. And my grandmother stooped down, came all the way down to me. And she said, you cut it out and you cut it out now. And I was still crying and fronting and all kinds of stuff is going on. And she grabbed her Bible and she chugged the Bible at me. And she said, turn to Leviticus 19. My grandmother had but a third grade education. Both of her parents died by the time she got to the third grade, she was born 1922. So both of her parents died somewhere around 1927, 28 or somewhere there. And so she had to drop out of school and found a job as a caregiver for her aunt's children at eight or nine years old. So she didn't get to go to school. She was caring for children, but she had a vision. She had a plan. And so my grandmother gave, chugged the Bible, and she said, turn to Leviticus uh, uh, 19. And, uh, and, and I, turned this, I turned to the scripture. And she said, go down to 33, from 33 to 35, and I'm about to shut up in a minute, I promise you, uh, from 33 to 35. And I read 33 to 35, and it says, well, if, my, you know, if a stranger sojourns among you, you shall not do anything to vex them. You shall treat the stranger as the living among you and love your neighbor as yourself. And I'm reading this while crying and snotting and all that, and she said, clean yourself up and read it again. And I read it again, and I was still crying and fronting and snorting. And she said, you won't stop reading it until you stop crying so you can understand what it's saying to you. And after I read it about the fourth or fifth time, she asked me, did you understand what you read? And I said, it said I just repeated what it said. It said, if people come, if visitors come to your house, you should love them, you should. And my grandmother proceeded to give me a lesson that this land doesn't belong to you. She said, this house doesn't belong to you. It doesn't belong to me. It doesn't belong to us. It is all of ours to share. She said, when anyone comes into this house, when anyone comes anywhere that you are, love them and treat them the way you will love and treat your family. Make them feel welcome and loved in your presence. And that became the, 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 the foundation of my ministry and the work that I do. Why did I share that with you? If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. You see, my wicked ways in that moment was selfishness. You see, I felt like strangers were coming in and they were taking what belonged to me. They took my bed. They were taking my food. They were taking my grandmother's time. And my grandmother had to snap me out of that in a heartbeat. We live in a country where we're told that the others are coming and the others have come in and the others are taking your land. The others are taking, the others are, are, are filling up your school. The others are doing that. The Bible is saying we need to turn from that mindset. We need to turn away from that. God is saying, once we have done those things, humble, seek my face, turn from our wicked ways and pray, then 
will I hear from heaven. Only then, you don't do one and get through. You see, there's a list of things that we have to do. Let me tell you something, if we want this country to be healed, if we want to see racism stop, if we want to see discrimination come to an end, if we want to see bigotry stop, we have work to do. Don't think that because you marched in the last march, that is enough. Don't think that because you donated to the last movement, that is enough. Don't think that because you sit in the service and you listen to my word, that is enough. Until you start actively doing some things, doing more, speaking out, uh, using your resources to see the, to, to bring about the changes that you want to see, standing with people who don't necessarily look like you or feel like you or make you feel comfortable. Until we start doing those things, then we will not receive the healing that we so crave. My life, my humanity, that of my children and my grandchildren depend on what you do in this moment, on what decisions you make in this moment, on how you choose to move forward in this time. It is okay to listen and to speak amongst your friends, but that's not enough. Get up. Do something. Use your voice. Use your body. Take risks. Put yourselves in uncomfortable situations because until you do that, my life have no meaning in a country that tells me every single day by its actions and policies that I am three-fifths human and that my rights and my freedom, my justice, do not matter if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways and pray, then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, the original sin of slavery. I will forgive their sins, the sins of family separation. I will forgive their sins, the sins of police brutality and murder and injustice on the black indigenous brown community. I will forgive their sins of othering LGBTQ youth. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. God bless you this morning. Thank you. And I challenge you, let not this hour that we have spent together be just for good feeling, but let it be an hour that is used to change our hearts, change our minds, change our actions, and ultimately change the trajectory of this nation. God bless you.
Let us join together in affirming our faith using Justo Gonzalez's words of our creed. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of the heavens and the earth, creator of all peoples and all cultures, creator of all tongues and races. We believe in Jesus Christ, God's beloved Son, God made flesh in a person for all humanity. God made flesh in an age for all ages. God made flesh in one culture for all cultures. God made flesh in love and grace for all creation. We believe in the Holy Spirit through whom God became incarnate in Jesus Christ in whom God is present in our peoples and in our cultures, through whom God, the creator of all that exists, gives us power to become new creatures. The Spirit's infinite gifts make us one people, the body of Jesus Christ. We believe in the church universal because it is a sign of God's reign whose faithfulness is shown in many hues, where all colors paint a single landscape, where all tongues sing God's praises. We believe in the reign of God, the day of the great fiesta, when all creation's colors will form a harmonious rainbow, when all the peoples will join in joyful banquets, when all tongues of the universe will be united in one choir of praise. And because we believe, we commit ourselves to believe for those who do not believe, to love for those who do not love, to dream for those who do not dream, until what we experience becomes a reality. Amen. 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 Nothing, just not 
magmahal ang tayo't nagtutungan At kung tayo'y bigo at huwag lumutin na may Diyos tayo In hope that the arc of history bends toward justice, we lift up our prayers of healing, saying, bind us together, O God of love. For the church, that is prophetic voice and action, may proclaim and claim the challenge to deconstruct racism, breaking the hopeless cycles of poverty, ignorance, prejudice, and despair which degrade the sacred community of humankind. We pray. We give thanks for the ministry of Reverend Dr. Andre Bennett, for the ECHO and MCAN communities in Massachusetts, but most of all, for the generosity that preaching the gospel transcends all boundaries. And we pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, our bishops John and Diane, and for our clergy Jane, Nancy, Dean, Beryl, and Steve, and for our vestry and staff. Bind, Bind us, us together, together O God of, oh God, oh God, oh God of oh. love. For the wonder of creation, that we might use its resources rightly in the service of others, and to the glory of God, we pray. We pray for all those lives who are um, being affected by the forest fires across California. And we, we just pray that the fires might be contained and that lives might be saved. Bind us, us together, together. Oh God, oh God, oh God. for our country, that we might celebrate our racial diversity and the distinctive and rich contributions of every fiber of our cultural fabric, we pray. Bind, Bind us, us together, together O oh God, oh God. God of love. For wise and decisive action on the part of the local and national leaders, that the scandal of racism might be eradicated from our society and equity and justice established as the law of the land. We pray. We give thanks for the 100th anniversary of woman suffrage. We pray for President Trump, for the members of Congress, for Governor Newsom, Mayor Garcia, and all elected officials and all who serve in government. Bind, Bind us together, 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 oh God of, together, God. Oh God of for a reimagining of economic, political, and social systems that have resulted in the disproportionate suffering of, and death of people of color throughout our history, and as revealed during the COVID-19 pandemic, we pray. We give thanks for Nathan's bold words and his invitation and reminder that indeed it is movement time. For all essential workers, all who have lost income due to the COVID-19, all infected by the novel coronavirus, and all suffering from depression, anxiety, and isolation due to COVID-19. 
bind, bind us, us together. together. God of yeah, love. God of oh, love. God. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those whose lives are closely linked with ours, and those connected to us as part of the human family, for refugees and prisoners, for the sick and suffering, for the lonely and despairing, for those facing violence, for all held down by prejudice or injustice, we pray. For Beryl, Nathan, Mike, Jean, Karen, Ernie, Eunice, Joan, Vilma, Ron, Sue, Harry, Gracie, Andrew, Patrick, Cassidy, Rita, William, Benjamin, Paul, Anne, Christy, Jim, Patricia, Ruth, Lucille, Shago, Kim, Tony, Olga, James, Alex, Anne, Ned, Gay, George, for our homeless brothers and sisters, for all refugees and immigrants, for an end to violence of all kind. Bind, Bind us together, us together, us God together God. for God. For all who have died, for the faithful in every generation who have worked for justice, for prophets who called us to racial reconciliation, for martyrs who died because of hatred, and for all the communion of saints, we pray. For Dory Ferrone, David Allen, Elizabeth Soyster. Eternal rest for Greg O'Donnell, the stepfather of our mayor. Bind, Bind us, us together, together, of God, us together. Of God. Of God. God of love, you created every human being in your image and you command us to love each other as you love us. Hear our prayers as we come before you and inspire us to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with you. Amen. 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 All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so as a community and as individuals, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. The hatred which divides nation from nation, race from race, class from class. Merciful God, God. Merciful God forgive. The covetous desires of people and nations to possess what is not their own. Merciful God, forgive. Merciful God, forgive. The greed which exploits the work of human hands and lays waste the earth. Merciful, Merciful God, God, forgive. Merciful God, forgive. Our envy of the welfare and happiness of others. Merciful, Merciful God, God, forgive. Merciful God, forgive. forgive. Our indifference to the plight of the imprisoned, the homeless, the refugee. Merciful, Merciful God. God. Merciful God. <laughs> Forgive. The lust which dishonors the bodies of men, women, and children. Merciful God. Merciful God. Forgive. Merciful God. Forgive. The pride which leads us to trust in ourselves and not in God. Merciful God, God, forgive. Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. And may God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. 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 One world, one communion, one faith in Christ the Son. One world, one communion, and there is room for everyone. One world, one communion, one faith in Christ the Son. One world, one communion, and there is room for everyone. Wherever people gather to share the bread and cup, though we are many, we are one in love. So much we have in common, though we are miles apart. Through the Holy Spirit, we are one in heart. And so we are one world, one communion, one faith in Christ the Son. One world, one communion, and there is room for everyone. Wherever bread is broken and where the cup is poured, brothers and sisters, we are one in the Lord. Though many things divide us with great diversity, through the power of love we will find unity. So help us see there's one world, one communion, one faith in Christ the Son, one world, one communion, and there is room for everyone, there is room for everyone, there is room for all. As we pray the words of the great thanksgiving, know that we are all woven together in the body of Christ as the sacrament of Christ's body and blood unites us in heart and spirit. God be with you. And also, and also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift, up them. lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, 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 to give right to give our thanks right. and praise. It is right and good and always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You've made us in your image and called us to be life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you. Joining our voices with angels and our angels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, holy Lord, 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 in the higher. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us. To reconcile us to you, God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself.
yourself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. And then I was handed over to suffering and death. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood and new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whatever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. 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 Christ will that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, all our God, now. Amen. Amen. And now, as I share Christ's titles, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and thy kingdom come, your kingdom come, and will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Give us our sins as our trespasses, and our sins as our trespasses. And lead us not to the bread of the evil, but the bread of the evil, and 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 the bread of the evil, Forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. The Christ, our Passover, is standing as for us. Therefore, let us go to the peace. Let us go to the peace. As this broken bread was scattered over the mountains and was gathered together to become one, so let your body of faithful be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. Now please join me in the, in the prayer for spiritual communion. In union, blessed Jesus, the Jesus, 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 Jesus,
blessed people of St. Luke's, it is our opportunity to offer up our prayers of thanksgiving and blessing and anything special that we need to be paying attention to on this day or in this week. So, St. Lucians, Facebook folks, chat it up, shout it out, comment it. What are our prayers today? We have a birthday this Wednesday. All right. Happy birthday, Robert. Mm -hmm. Other birthdays, anniversaries, milestones. High school registration was this past week. Uh, All right. And if others come up, we will just add them in as we go. And so, Michaela, another birthday. All right. Jane, one more thing. Um, yeah. Molly, my daughter, and Mason <laughs> were not able to be married yesterday, but they're spending a glorious weekend with those who are local in the Boston area um, and were to be part of their wedding party up at Barbara C. Harris camp and having a wonderful time. All right. <laughs> Let us gather in prayer. Holy and life-giving God, you weave us into one community. And we give you thanks this day for the abundant blessing of having Andre with us as our preacher, for the blessing of Nathan's words, for the blessing of this community as it gathers. We give thanks for your children who are celebrating birthdays this week, for Robert, Michaela, Ginger, and Rocky. And Lord, you created each and every one of them in your image, and you bless them with gifts to make a difference in our world. And Lord, whether they are uh, saving entire canyons or celebrating their birthdays with women's suffrage or simply, Lord, enjoying life as it unfolds, bless them, open their hearts, their minds to all the wonders of this world that they might day by day step up to and into all the blessing and challenge that life is. And we give you thanks, God, for the healing of Alex, for his ability now uh, to be uh, healed from COVID and to be out and about in the world again. And we give thanks for all of the students beginning new years of school, for all of the teachers as we continue to learn and figure out what this online educational world can look like so that it is a place of opportunity and learning and not simply frustration and Zoom fatigue and parental craziness. And so, Lord, for those starting new institutions, colleges, high schools, middle schools, elementary schools, where it's just uh, not what anyone expected, help them to know that they will and are woven into that community and that they will and are new and open to opportunities and just to bless them in their learning adventures and bless them who are teachers and administrators seeking to make the most of this world for them. And God, we ask your blessing on Molly and Mason as they mark their not wedding day 
and pray that all those who are delaying weddings till 2021 might actually get a chance to gather family and friends for those weddings. But for Molly and Mason on this day, God, we ask your blessing that they might know how abundantly they are loved and that their love for one another might show us something of God's holy love for each and every one of us. Amen. And now, for all of our community, may God give you grace never to sell yourself short, grace to risk something big for something good, and grace to remember that the world is too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. And may the God who made us bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, this day and always. Amen. Amen. And so um, I do want to, in our announcements now, uh, Thank our uh, Baptocostal preacher, Andre. Uh, it was glorious to welcome you into our digital pulpit, and we look forward to a moment when you can be physically in our pulpit with us in our sacred space. But um, we will have, as it goes with Baptocostal preachers, a brief Q&A after we close <laughs> with Andre for you to find out anything and everything you want to know about him. Uh, and, and, you know, we'll just cut him off in his answers of the questions, you know. Um, but now I'd like to ask Julie Von Pell to offer a vestry update. Hi, everybody. Um, the vestry meeting on Tuesday, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we went over, we had a a big budget review with Rob Bellevue. Um, he continues to quiz us and break us into groups and makes us learn all about finance 101. Um, <laughs> and we do it willingly, kind of. Um, and then the church <laughs> renovation. Um, I hope that you're looking on uh, the weekly update, especially this week's, with pictures of what the church is starting to look like inside. And we look forward to all the good things that are happening there and for soon, hopefully that we can all worship there. And then we, uh, most of us all have agreed to join the work to do on Wednesdays. And uh, I'm pleased to let you know that out of 120 people that signed up, 60 of them were from St. Luke's. So we did a good job. Thank you. Thanks, Julie. And what I would just add is um, Suzanne Edwards Acton has said that given Democratic Convention and various uh, obstacles that prevented people from joining last week, um, that you are still welcome to sign up for my work to do. Yeah, and good. while Suzanne and her team may not be thanking you for being there, um, your clergy and wardens and vestry we're, we are thanking you for being there because it was simply awesome to see all the faces of St. Luke's and to know that we are having this common experience of learning. And so even if you missed last week, uh, sign up before this Wednesday night, come join us for the next four Wednesdays. And let's see if we can really crush it and maybe get 80 St. Lucians <laughs> there uh, before we're done. So I think that's it on announcement. And now, the peace of Christ be always with you. And also, also with, you. with you. And also with you. Yay. And also with you. 
Amen. for joining us on Facebook Live. We will see you here next Sunday with another fabulous preacher. You do not want to miss it. So see you next Sunday, Facebook family and my Zoom family. Stick around for a Q&A.